They would be Morgoth's greatest sins, abuses of his highest privilege, and would be creatures begotten of sin, and naturally bad. I nearly wrote irredeemably bad, but that would be going too far. Because by accepting or tolerating their making, necessary to their actual existence, even orcs would become part of the world, which is God's and ultimately good. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we are taking a look at a widely asked and heavily debated topic within our fandom of Middle-earth. Were orcs redeemable? Related sources are in the description and cards, while much of Tolkien's direct thoughts on the matter may be found in his letters, as well as a bit in the history of Middle-earth saga. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me, let's begin our tale. With this video, I actually think it is rather apt to first begin with the answer and then work our way backwards through the evidence and my reasoning of it. In my opinion, orcs could not morally be redeemed, at least not in the ways that we think of redemption in stories, where a character is physically and mentally turned back towards the actions of good and service of others to make up for the evils they had committed within Middle-earth. We in fact must make this assumption, for if we do not, the tales of the Lord of the Rings, the Hobbit, and the Silmarillion have far, far darker connotations to them, where our heroes are engaged in almost racial wars between themselves and the orc kind, among many other enemies, without burden or fears of the connotations of killing orcs without trying to redeem them, leading to the end of that whole race by the Fourth Age, without ever taking that time to, again, try to turn them to a better road. We have to make that assumption that they cannot be morally redeemed by our characters to really have the stories that we have in the first place. And we can also safely make that assumption and know that our characters are doing what's right in those times, because some characters lament fighting against other human beings or elves in the Kinslangs, but no character truly laments killing an orc, goblin, uruk, troll, warg, spider, dragon, or balrog. Now, it is still not as simple and easy as all of this. Nothing, or at least rarely anything, with a possible exception being something like Ungoliant, is actually originally made evil in the beginning in Tolkien's works. Elrond notes this about Sauron, stating that even he was not evil in the beginning. I think this probably applies to Melkor as well, who was jealous and powerful at the start of everything, which perhaps led to his future evil, but I don't believe Melkor was innately, instantly wishing to slay and enslave the other Ainur in the halls of Eru. Sure, he wished for leadership and mastery, but I'm not quite sure about evil per se in the beginning. This is so with the orcs as well, who of course were once elves, twisted, corrupted, and perverted into the orcs that they became. I doubt orcs could have been reverted back into elves by any of the free peoples redeemed in that sort of way, and maybe they could not even be physically and mentally redeemed in that sort of way by even the Valar themselves. And I also doubt that they could have overcome their innate hatred and perversion that made them how they are at all. However, Tolkien played actually with this idea quite a lot, so let's look at some of his musings after I suggest a bit of a theory that I've had from my own headcanon in dealing with this issue. In my mind, similar to a select few other creatures such as the dragons, who could not have had sentient souls or Fear as the elves named souls, since Melkor nor any other besides Eru had the power to instill the flame imperishable, that which gives true life, into a creature, I had come to believe that, upon their great torment and perversion, the elvish hosts would depart from their bodies, leaving them behind, as their Fear went to the halls of Mandos. Their husks, or Hror, bodies, remained to become an orc, making them effectively drone-like zombies through the subcreation of Melkor, bound to the evil will of their masters, Morgoth and later Sauron. However, some of my findings while actually researching for this video seem to almost directly contradict that, so let's look into it. The letter in the beginning of this video, Tolkien's Letter 153, describes orcs as a race of rational, incarnate beings, ones who are, admittedly, horribly corrupted. But Tolkien also draws a comparison between those orcs being no more corrupt than some men who may be yet found today in the world, which actually says quite a lot. Yet, this letter also says, as in the quote from the beginning, that if orcs had been fully created by Morgoth, 
created and instilled with spirit and so on and so forth, they still would not be irredeemable. Yet orcs had not even been created so evilly by him. They had rather just been corrupted into such a creature. Even then, though, they would still not be irredeemable. And then in later writings provided in Morgoth's Ring, in the Myths Transformed Section 7, apparently the wise in the First Age and perhaps earlier taught that orcs were not made by Melkor and were not therefore originally evil, and that since they so directly served Morgoth, they still needed to be fought against severely, but not inhumanely tortured when captured for any reason. But it is said that this advice of the wise to the other elves, and the horrors of war, was not always heeded. And few orcs did ever surrender at all, believing the lies of their master that the elves were actually far worse than they were. However, if we go back to that letter 153, it is stated that any part of the world that would be created in Middle-earth would therefore be of God's manifestation, Eru's manifestation, and ultimately good. So, all of this actually makes it sound like orcs had some facets of deep, far away good nature somewhere within, and they were not irreversibly, irredeemably evil per se, but I believe the lore plus these musings do deliver us at an ultimate answer. Orcs were so twisted and cruel in their actual nature that it doesn't seem like they could actually be redeemed by the free peoples or any of their actions, at least not before the lies that had manipulated and twisted the orcs into what they were saw an orcish victory over that which was already good, pure and innocent in the world. It seems that had any orcs been able to be redeemed, Sauron would have already won. Perhaps if the orcs could be convinced, their masters Melkor and Sauron would also need to be defeated first, as they centralized the orcs under a certain will, and without them, orcs became decentralized and rather gathered into tribes and became problems in remote places, as we so often see in the Legendarium. Then perhaps with enough grace, one might even have the ability to turn them towards some better ideology, somewhat. Yet even this does not seem quite right to me, as throughout all of the thousands of years of lore that we have to draw upon, not once do we have mention of a man, elf, dwarf, or hobbit turning an orc back to fighting for the free peoples. Therefore, I do not believe that the orcs were redeemable in a physical, upon Middle-earth sort of way. Not in a sort of Vader returning to the light side kind of way. More, if we look into the metaphysics and ontological, even quasi-religious sentiments within Tolkien's works, I think that orcs might have been redeemed by Eru and Eru alone, as being recognized for having an important role to play within Middle-earth's history, and that since they were necessary beings in the unraveling of the history of Arda and the children of Eru, they were necessarily not irredeemably evil, for in Arda, nothing was. But in a more practical and pragmatic sense, orcs could not be easily turned back to the purposes of good. They could not overcome the physical torture that they or their ancestors had been through, the lies and manipulations, the will of their masters, all during wartime, when time itself was of great value and of little supply, to truly be redeemed or saved. But what do you all think? How can we find an answer that's both satisfactory to the amount of deeper thought and meaning that Tolkien put into this question, that also satisfies our potential moral and ethical problem when it comes to our heroes within The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, and The Silmarillion. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. And so, my friends, we come to the end of our tale on Were the Orcs Redeemable? From this story, we see that the nature of the world, as well as the nature of good and evil, as concepts, are never clearly and easily defined, even and especially when we think they are. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed these musings on this topic. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. Definitely let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments below. I'm curious to see if I missed anything in this morally and ethically complex problem. 
If you'd like to support the channel, please consider getting some candles from our friends Mythology Candles or order some whatever United Cutler, your Lord of the Rings sword statues and other replicas from Castle Khan, who does international shipping and use the code WEST at checkout. And please check out our merch and Patreon. Thanks to our Valor tier patrons and YouTube members, Peter Shepard, Martin, John Hume, Elizabeth Calvert, Mass Gibbs, Reese Jenkins, Arthur Merlin, Dale Davis, Theodore, Moon Viper, Andrew Carlisle, Zumi, and Brian Hunley. Thank you so much to all of our patrons and YouTube members. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. And I'll see you all again next week with a new type of lore video that I'm excited to be trying out. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.